He's the guy overseeing the tech that makes it possible for travelers to search for, shop and buy travel at one of the most world's most valuable travel companies. It's been just under 10 years since that company invested in a travel reservation software, a move that ignited a firestorm of speculation and kicked off a steady march into almost every area of the consumer travel experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Google's Vice President Engineering, Oliver Heckman. Good morning. I'm an engineering VP at Google and I oversee the development of our shopping and our travel products. And as we heard, the theme of this conference is, are we there yet? And for that theme, I cannot think of a better topic than the topic of AI and machine learning and how that is changing the world of travel. And I'm not surprised that others think the same way. We saw this topic mentioned a number of times yesterday, and I'm sure we'll see it a lot more today and tomorrow. So language is a very natural obstacle and friction point when users are traveling. Let me share a personal story. This is literally the place where my family and I took our last year's summer vacation. It's in a very hidden place in France. And after a night of massive thunderstorms in August, uh, multiple trees had come down, and one of them had actually brought the power mast half down, and we had the power line that's bringing power to this place swinging in the storm, just like about this above uh, the ground. And uh, getting electrocuted was not on our list of things to do. Uh, so my wife kept our two-year-old and our seven-year-old very active boys as far away from the incident as possible, and I picked up my phone and started hiking towards the next um, set of hills, trying to get connectivity to a cell phone tower that was still working. And when I finally had connectivity and I started to dial the like, emergency number, <laughs> I kind of paused because it occurred to me well, in my family, it's actually my wife. She's the only person who can speak French. So I would explain what happened, that it's really, really urgent, and especially how they would find this hidden place, which is really hard to find, in French. So I was lucky because uh, in the last couple of years, thanks to advances in machine learning, Google Translate has become really powerful. And I had it installed on my phone, and it allowed me to real-time translate from German into French and have a series of phone calls with the emergency number down to literally a local repair crew that was on its way and that I was able to guide to the place of the incident. So how did we get to this point where I can have a conversation in French without really speaking French? In the last, let's say, five or so years, AI and machine learning has drastically transformed the way that computer science works. And because of the magnitude of change that we're experiencing, some are calling what we're seeing right now the beginning of a second machine age. And this change is in no way or form only limited to the field of computer science. It's impacting all parts of our lives. For example, healthcare. Lung cancer is by far the deadliest of all cancers. It kills over 1.7 million people every single year. And screening typically works by taking a scan of the lung and then have a highly trained professional, a radiologist, look at the scan trying to find the cancer early on. Uh, we trained a machine learning system on 45,000 of these lung scans and compared it to the work of six US board certified radiologists. And the results were astonishing because the system uh, has a five, detected 5% 5 more cancer cases and it avoided 11% false positives where someone might have gone through treatment without really having cancer. And this is just yet one other example where the advances in machine learning are improving our lives. I would argue, actually, in this case, it's actually saving lives. So how does it work? Um, I want to start with a quick definition. When we say AI, 
at least according to textbooks, that's the science of making machines intelligent. The actual reality today is that typically AI gets used as a marketing term that gets put onto all kinds of products. It doesn't really carry that much meaning in reality. Machine learning is the big important technical term. That's basically a science of taking a lot of computational power and a lot of data and have machines learn by themselves. That's a way to build AIs. That's the way AIs are built these days. And Machine learning has seen a big breakthrough in the last five or so years. And that breakthrough is predominantly coming from one very specific method on how to do machine learning, and that's the application of deep neural networks. At the like, abstract high level, deep neural network is modeled after how, again, abstract level, how the human brain works. So let me get back to my earlier translate example. So how do we build a system now? Uh, that can take a sentence in one language and translate it into another language. So before the machine learning breakthrough, what one would have done, you would have built a dictionary of words that translates one word from one language into another language. Then you would have hired a whole bunch of linguists in that one language to give you all the rules of grammar and how to build a plural and singular. Same thing in the other language, a bunch of software engineers that put this all in code and translate it from one to the other. And that is literally how Google Translate and other tools were built until a very few years ago. This approach has a problem in that it's not very scalable. You kind of have to do all of this work for each language pair, 100 input languages multiplied with 100 output languages. It's quite expensive to do, and the best of the systems, the state of the art, was able to translate phrases in the input language into phrases of the output language, and then some other system would stitch those phrases together. Sometimes that worked really well, but often enough, that did not really work. So, a few years ago, machine learning transformed this entire field of machine translation from the ground up. What we can do now is we can just have machines learn the language rules simply by itself. For the training data in Google Translate, we take literally billions of web documents, news articles, and a lot of books that are translated in different languages. And also, we rely on over 700 million contributions by our users. And then we take a big data structure that's called a deep neural network. It's a highly connected data structure. And for each input sentence in one language, we show it the output sentence in the translated language, and then we use feedback to reconfigure the network. And if you do that a lot of times, a couple of billion times, then that neural network in the center will start to be able to identify patterns in the language, structures of the sentences, and after some time, it will offer increasingly good translations. And contrary to previous approaches that were phrase-by-phrase -phrase translating, like putting pieces of a puzzle together, this works on the entire sentence. That makes the translations more accurate, and, and that's also important, it also makes it sound a lot more natural. There's many other innovations happening in this space. Like, for example, you can now train multiple languages on the same neural network. And that allows you to exploit similarities between the languages, and there are plenty of similarities between languages. And this also gives a boost to less frequently spoken languages, to more exotic languages, for, for which you might have not otherwise have enough training data to do a really good job in translation. Plenty of innovation happening in this space. I'm very optimistic that within the next decade or less, machine translation quality will be at the same level as good human translation quality. And that's going to be a game changer for people, how they experience the world when they're traveling. So now that I have explained how machine learning is working, I want to share three example areas of, for all of you to consider when you're thinking of how today you can use machine learning in your business. And those areas are price insights and recommendations, customer service and operations, and online marketing. Users often hesitate to book 
for example, because they're not certain that they're getting a fair price, or because they have this idea that if they just wait a bit, then maybe the price is going down. And often, actually, the price goes up. So machine learning, as I said, is really good at making sense of large amounts of data. So what we can do is we can take large amounts of historic price information, feed it into an ML system, and then have that system get trained on offering price insights and price predictions. There's a number of products that do this really well. Hopper is quite known for this. Also, our products, Google Flights and Google Hotels, um, have this as a key feature. You can see the hotel example here behind me. In fact, actually, when we ask our users about their most beloved features, price insights typically ranks very high on that list. Also, when we do improvements in our price insight algorithm, that typically leads to improvements in the conversion rate for our partners, for you. Recently, we did an interesting um, experiment. Um, we wanted to go a step beyond offering price insights. So um, we trained a machine learning system on, in flights on historic public price information. And the engineers who did that had so much confidence in that system that we decided for a temporary um, promotion to give users money if we were wrong. So the way it worked is if our algorithm were confident that the price a user was seeing in Google Flight Search would no longer drop before the departure, then we would offer the user price guarantee if they booked it. And in the rare case that we were wrong, which happened, but luckily for us, not that often, uh, we would pay them the difference. So they were guaranteed to get the flight at the lowest price. As I said, we ran this for a short time, three weeks, and the test was a spe spectacular success. It massively boosted users' confidence, and it drove additional bookings for our partners. Um, that brings me to the second area I want you to consider on how to use the latest in machine learning technology to improve a part of your business. And this is probably an area that is in dire need of improvement, at least based on my personal experience by regularly having to call a customer service. So I'm talking about customer service, in particular if someone calls a call center with their phone. Machine learning, because of the breakthrough in machine learning, machine learning is really good at helping machines to do speech recognition and natural language understanding. And we use that a lot in Google Search, for example, or in the Google Assistant. So now if you take that latest in technology and you put it into a call center, you can have that first line of customer service. Like that's when you're calling the customer service and they're picking up and you're talking to a machine. You can make that so much better. You can make it more noise resistant. You can make it deal with German accents better. You can identify the user intent much better and the user sentiment. And then later in the process, when like, the, uh, the, the customer is calling and is talking to a human agent, you can also continue to use that system to assist the human agent, for example, by pulling up the most relevant article from the knowledge base and showing it to the agent. Hulu is, an example. Hulu is the video streaming company. They're an example who are using the latest in technology. Uh, they're using it from Salesforce, but it has Google technology built in at the core. So what happens that, let's say, a customer is calling the call center, and the customer mentions that they wanted to, say, watch a certain sports program. Then the system can identify that, pull up information about that sport, and in the background, automatically show it to the agent so that the agent can use it and weave it into the conversation with the customer. Let's say by reminding the customer about the time and date of the playoffs. And uh, Hulu is experiencing much higher customer satisfaction as a result of that, as well as in parallel improving the efficiency of their agents. So. This brings me to the third part, to the third example. This is online marketing. Now, many of you, maybe all of you, are actually already using a whole bunch of different machine learning systems in online marketing, but you might not be fully aware of that. At Google, when, we, um, when we're determining how to show the best possible ad at the best possible placement in search, 
we run actually a large number of different, very sophisticated machine learning systems to help us with that decision. One example is there is a uh, machine learning system that is predicting the click-through rate of your search ad, and that's key in determining in which position that search ad will show up. Machine learning is also helpful in many other ways in the world of online advertisement. For example, by crunching through large amount of data to offer advertisers additional insight about their ads. It's also really useful to automate your bidding strategies and hand that over and have a machine bid on your behalf. We're constantly improving our different advertising technologies with the latest in machine learning. And many partners across different regions, across different verticals, as you can see, are um, benefiting from that. They're using machine learning to drive growth through marketing. So, how does machine learning change the way we're developing products at Google? Machining, machine learning is basically making us reinvent all of our products from search to Gmail. And it's also allowing us to build new products that literally were unthinkable just like five years ago. For example, the Google Assistant. Machine learning also helps us throughout all these products to make our products more natural and more useful to the user at the same time. And you can do the same thing because the technology that we're using, like TensorFlow, uh, Google Cloud AI, and so on, is actually available for everybody to use. And that brings me to my last slide. I want to draw the conclusion. The question on the big screen over there is, are we there yet? With respect to machine learning, we're definitely there. It's currently changing the world of computer science, the world of travel, and many other parts of our lives. I think another question to ask is, how much can we do with it? And here, I want to remind everybody, while the revolution of machine learning is currently happening, we're still in the early phases of it. I'm pretty sure that the best ideas are actually still to come, and maybe they're coming from someone in this room. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you.